You're very welcome to today's talk, Monday the 27th of November. Now I'm going to be looking at some of the excess deaths data from the countries that we normally look at. And I'm going to restrict this to 2023 excess deaths now, because as we get to the end of November, the year's data is starting to make sense and the news is not at all good. We'll also be noting that vaccines, at least Moderna vaccines, are being uh, suspended in Iceland and restricted in some other Scandinavian countries. They seem to be well ahead of the curve. And as time permits, I want to look at some data from the uh, or information from the CDC, which you might think is a little bit strange, but we'll, we'll come on to that. Let's look at some of this excess data first and um, really pretty concerning. So this is Australia here. Now, we can see that this actually begins in uh, January 2023. So that's where we actually start this uh, this graphic today. And it was pretty high, over 20%, just under 20%. And it seems to have dropped down really quite dramatically. Now, I really hope this is genuine data, but I'm afraid, I suspect it may not be. I suspect it may just be um, that it's incomplete. Um, but we'll keep an eye on that. But um, we can see that the death rates have been high and this data is all based on the uh, the five years up to 20, uh, 2019 for the averages so way above what we would expect in 2023 not the vast majority of these not by any means attributable to COVID that's Australia this is Canada now we see in Canada um, well above 15 percent for most of the year this is the 15% line here. So, um, and still now well above 15% in Canada. Excess deaths very, very high at the start of the at the start of the year, as you can probably see there, just at the start of the year. Uh, moving on to, um, where's this? This is Denmark. Well, again, fairly similar pattern. High at the start of the year, but continuing throughout the year. Now, one of the really concerning things we're noticing here is that these excess deaths are continuing through summer. So we can't attribute this to the sort of seasonality factors that we often see with influenza and things like that. There's some other factor going on here in multiple countries. And of course, the question is, why aren't the epidemiologists asking what is the, what are the common denominators here? They don't seem to be asking that question. Why isn't mainstream media asking that question? Why is it only a few people like me that are asking that question? Really pretty hard to understand because we're dealing with an awful lot of people dying here. That's Denmark. Moving on to um, Germany. Again, very similar pattern. Again, deaths 10% above the what will we expect for quite a lot of the year including the middle of uh, the middle of the German summer, which, of course, is nice and warm. Not when we would expect a lot of deaths. Ireland, um, well, again, very high in Ireland, I'm afraid, um, round about, what, 12, 14%, uh, 12, 13% at the moment, but have been high consistently throughout the year, again, as we notice, including summer. Japan... Now, notice with Japan here that this baseline is 14%. So the excess deaths in Japan in the middle of summer were 14%. They started off at over 28% and now they're back up to over 24%. This is quite horrendous in Japan. Huge amounts of excess deaths. And I don't think I need to remind you now that we would expect excess deaths to be lower now because vulnerable people died for one reason or another, during the uh, pandemic year. So we'd expect these figures to be way below the 2019, five, up to 2019 five-year average. Not what we're seeing. Why aren't people asking about common factors here? Netherlands. Well, again, notice that this is the baseline here at 5%. So it's been well above that level all the time, 20%. Now it's maybe just over 20%. Again, throughout the year, and again, we see this huge peak in the Netherlands, bang in the middle of summer, 24th of June. Um, okay, it is compared to previous Junes, but it's still not showing any sort of seasonality. Just increased deaths all year round, as if 
the factor that's causing these excess deaths is present with us all the time. It, it looks looks a bit like that. Um, this is New Zealand. Um, again, we've been high pretty well for all of the year. Now around about 4%, I would say, um, above the, uh, the expected numbers. But has been, up until recently, really much higher, up, up as high as 20% for New Zealand. Singapore. Now, just look at this graph of Singapore here. Let's pay attention to this. The baseline here is 20%. So the excess deaths in Singapore in about August dipped, dipped to 18% above what we would expect. So here we see the graph started at 28%, went up to over 40%, dipped right down here to about 18%, round about over 30% now. So incredible number of excess deaths in Japan and Singapore. What could these countries possibly have in common? Because they're not that close together geographically. With all these other countries, what could they possibly have in common that could be causing these excess deaths? What factor or factors could there be a common factor here? I'm just postulating that as a maybe a bit of a far out hypothesis, but I'm postulating it nonetheless. Um, that is uh, Singapore. South Korea. Again, look at the baseline here, 15%. So this this baseline here is about 10%. So again, we see that in, what, April, the excess deaths in South Korea dipped right down to plus 10% more than we would expect. And now we're, what, 25 to 24% more than we would expect. What could these co countries possibly have in common that could be accounting for this? Because the local difficulties, OK, you could have local difficulties with ambulances in England, of course, but, but would that be duplicated in all these other countries? It seems a bit far-fetched. What, what is going on here? Why isn't this question being asked? Why isn't it being shouted from the rooftops as people are dying? This is all our world in data Figures, of course, Taiwan. And again, look at this. It starts here at 10%. So that's the 15% line. So again, we see in Taiwan, the figures have been high all year. Deaths from all causes compared to average over previous years. And again, we're starting at the beginning of 2023. This is just 2023 data. United Kingdom, well, we're not as bad as uh, South Korea. We're not as bad as Japan. We're not as bad as Taiwan. But that's not saying much. Because we're still pretty high. Excess deaths all year round, only drip dipping below the zero for a very short period of time, once in the year. Uh, United States. Now, again, look at this graphic for the United States. That starts at 8%. So we see the excess deaths in the United States never is that, is that normal there or normal there? Maybe once or twice got down to normal, but have been 10%, up to 12% higher than we would expect for the time of year. And back to Australia. So very high excess deaths. All these countries that they're looking at. Why aren't people thinking about common factors? Now, just something else that caught my new my eye, actually. I just missed this, actually. This actually came out last month. Um... Uh, Iceland halts uh, Moderna jabs over heart inflammation fears. This is from uh, Medical Press. Check out the reference for yourself. That's a direct quote there. Iceland suspends M M Moderna anti-COVID vaccines. Um, chief epidemiologist, whose name I'm not going to attempt to pronounce. Um, Iceland will halt the use of Moderna vaccines. Decision was made after reviewing new safety data from Nordic countries, which shows an increased incidence of myocarditis as well as pericarditis. Decision was announced on the website of the Directorate of Health, which is here. And uh, that is the direct link. Again, this is the Icelandic language version, but uh, there are translations and a lot of news reports. The chief epidemiologist says this, the increased incidence of myocarditis and pericarditis after vaccine with the Moderna vaccine, as well as with the vaccination using Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine. So the chief epidemiologist here is saying, well, what they seem to be doing is say, well, you know, we're going to stop using Moderna vaccine. Fair enough. Moderna vaccine and Pfizer vaccine both cause myocarditis and pericarditis and other side effects. But we're going to carry on using the Pfizer vaccine. We're just going to drop the Moderna one. 
If that makes sense to you, do let me know how that can possibly make sense. Of course, they've dropped the Moderna vaccine and the Moderna vaccine or Moderna plants to produce Moderna vaccines in Oxford. They're building a new plant to produce a quarter of a billion doses a year, 250 million doses a year. New one in Australia, new one in Canada. I think there's a new one coming in Germany. Governments are putting colossal amounts of money into Moderna vaccines. And yet at least one country has said, we're going to suspend these. Questions to be asked again, I would have thought. Sweden currently restricts Moderna to older people, about what the age of 32. Um, Norway and Denmark rec- rec- recommends against Moderna for children aged 12 to 17. But they do, uh, they, they do allow uh, Pfizer for those age groups. Finland halts Moderna vaccine for young men again. Uh, Mika Silliman, director of the Finnish Institute of Health and Welfare. Uh, Finnish health authorities stop giving Moderna vaccines to young men. As we mentioned a long, long, long time ago. Over fears of heart inflammation, side effects, direct from the article. Moderna should not be given to men, boys under the age of 30 for the time being. So suspended, uh, a suspension. And I would be rather surprised if it was reintroduced in the future, but time will tell. Now, CDC... Help me with this because I'm really struggling with the CDC guidelines here. Um, I'll tell you why I'm struggling. Um, right, this is their website here. Safety of COVID vaccines. Billions of vaccines administered globally demonstrate that they are safe and effective. So that's right. This is from the CDC website today. They are still saying, CDC website are still saying on their website, the COVID vaccines are safe and effective safe and effective that's what they're saying that's what they're saying let me know what you think but they do also mention uh, side effects Uh, side effects uh, throughout the body such as fever chills tenderness and headache are common are more common after the second dose of a Pfizer BioNTech Moderna or Novavax COVID vaccine so more side effects after the second dose so they're talking about side effects for these vaccines that are safe and effective you might see some contradiction there we can't say it's wrong of course this is the cdc website not allowed to disagree um adverse events they go on to say uh severe allergic reactions to vaccine are rare but can happen uh, for these vaccines that are safe and effective um there's a rare risk of myocarditis and pericarditis associated with the mrna covid vaccines Mostly, not entirely, but mostly uh, in young males aged 12 to 39 years old. So there's a risk of myocarditis and pericarditis in uh, young men. For vaccines that are safe and effective. Myocarditis, pericarditis, safe and effective. Severe allergic reactions, myocarditis, pericarditis, safe and effective. Well, both of these things must be right because they're on the CDC website. They must be right. They're on the CDC website. So both must be correct. So the vaccines must cause myocarditis, pericarditis, anaphylaxis, but they must be safe and effective as well because the CDC says so. If you see any um, lack of internal validity there, then... Well, I can't help the way you read the CDC guidelines, can I? CDC, stay up to date with COVID-19 vaccines. Everyone aged five years and older should get one dose of updated COVID-19 vaccine to protect against serious illness from COVID-19. So everyone aged five years and over. Five years old, little children. Even smaller children aged six months to four years need multiple doses. So children aged six months to four years need multiple doses of COVID-19 vaccine to be up to date. Multiple doses. Children, I can't believe I'm reading this. This is from the CD website today. Children aged six months to four years need multiple doses of COVID-19 vaccine to be up to date, including at least one dose of updated COVID-19 vaccine. 
six months old children to four years need multiple doses of these vaccines. That's what it says. Must be right. It's on the CDC website. It's got to be right. I'm going to stop now. I feel a bit faint, I think. We'll leave it there for now. Thank you for watching.